So we're going to talk about this introduction. And what we're going to do is we will have two and a half days of instruction and a certification exam at the end of it. Certification exam is not a, not a really big bad deal, guys. I'm going to prepare you to take that test. I'm not going to pass it for you, but I'll prepare you. So when we get to that test, you won't be freaked out. You won't be upset. You'll go, huh, this is what they were talking about. You have with you a study guide. Look at that study guide, and each evening, review the sections in the study guide that we talked about that day. If you will do that, you will do very well on the test. Trust me. <laughs> if you don't do that, that two and a half hours will seem like all day. Okay, so please use that study guide. During the test, it's an open book exam. Don't write on your shirt sleeves or on your leg or anything like that. You don't need to do that. It's open book. You can use your notes, everything, except you can't use your phone to call a friend and you can't use a study guide. Okay? So is that agreeable to everybody? Good. All right, because that's what we're going to be doing. All right. So we're going to cover basically the design and installation of what we call closed loop systems. We will not be doing standing columns, lake loops, pond loops, uh, ocean loops, things like that. So as we go through this, you're going to find the book has a bunch of worksheets. If you don't want to make copies of those worksheets out of the book, you can go to the ICSPA member site, which after this you're all going to be ICSPA members if, if you're not already, and you'll be able to download those worksheets. And they'll take you through step by step. Has anybody here been in the military other than me? All right. They always gave us f forms to fill out for our worksheets, didn't they? Step one, step two, all the way. Okay, I was a surveyor, so we had a lot of steps depending on what we were doing. This is much like that. If you will follow that procedure, you will be able to do a proper design. Not only that, you'll be able to document your design. We will, in the future, have some expectations that if uh, somebody comes to us saying, Gary did a poor job, Gary will be able to document his design loads for the, the house or the building, his energy loads on how he's gonna run these systems, and the ground loads to be able to design the ground heat exchanger. It will be documented. He can pull out and say, well, here's that project. Instead of, hey, I'm experienced. I know how to do this crap. Why, you have, you know, why is that guy getting after me? We don't get in the middle of that. We don't administrate contract disputes, nor do we administrate licensing issues. But we do support the license with our standards. And hopefully those contracts address that issue of standards somehow, some way, to bring it in to from the license. Does that make sense? That's great. Okay. You know exactly what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah, that's great. yeah. So that's the way we're going. All right. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Well, we're going to tie it directly to the licenses in the future. Okay. The calculations, when we get to that, I'm probably going to ask Jackie, and she doesn't know this. <laughs> to come up and take us through a design on a ground loop. And we'll use a house here in Stillwater, Oklahoma, like we did in, in our class. And she'll show us how she does this. All right. Now, when she takes some of her liberties in her design, I will, ad I will address that and say, but I will not tell her not to do that because she's experienced in her area. She knows what works there and she documents what she does. Can you get any better than that? I don't think so. All right, so we'll get there. You're not gonna have to do these big, long, fancy equations. Okay, don't panic, <laughs> okay. Okay, so we have two and a half days. Uh, this exam, you know, it's open book, don't worry about it, it's fast paced. 
we are really going to emphasize the layout design and installation, minor sales and marketing. All right. So you've got a bunch of manuals. Everybody make sure you have these manuals. Everybody have the big spiral bound residential and light commercial. Hold that up, Curtis. Everybody have one of those puppies? You will need it. Okay. It's going to cover all the aspects of the design. If you want to do a PhD on ground source, that's where you get your information. It's there. All right. And it's got the worksheets to do the forms. All right. You will have the design and installation standards 2016. Does everybody have that? Locate it so you know what it looks like. Design and installation standards. Nope. Oh, right there. Hold it up for the class. Should say 2016 on it, does it? Yes. Okay. There'll be a 2017 coming out here shortly also. Okay, we're, your board is actively engaged in doing positive changes. I want you to understand that. Okay. Next, we'll have the soil and rock manuals. This will probably be the area of the biggest change in the future. Okay, does everybody have a soils and rocks manual? Aha, uh -huh. good. Anybody not? All right. You will have a slinky manual. We will not spend a lot of time talking about slinky systems. We're going to talk most of, mostly about vertical and horizontal systems. Okay. You will have a grouting manual. My background is drilling. Okay. When I was a kid, you know, that's, that's what I did for a living. My family was water well drillers. So that's dear to my heart. You get mud in your blood, you can't take it out. All right. So here's our syllabus. You should have that schedule in your packet. Does everybody have that? This will be Friday. So when you get your hands on. And in your packet, there will prob probably be a thing to pick out your lunch for Thursday and Friday. Okay. Friday. 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 Okay. Please fill that out and lay it right up here, right in the very center on the front so we know where they're at with your information on what you choose. Okay. And tomorrow we'll have barbecue. <laughs> we always have barbecue. Today. Yeah, excuse me. Today. We always have barbecue at at least one of these classes. It's just... History. That's what we've always done. All right. Fred and Randy used to, when we first started having conventions, they had this giant smoker, and they would start at like 5 in the morning smoking animals. I don't mean a side of meat. I mean animals. And then at lunch or evening, we'd have that. No, it would, they were good. That was a lot of fun. All right. Okay, introduction and overview. Ready to go? The case. Is there a case for ground source heat pumps? Well, I'll start back. Is there a case for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning and hot water heating? Yeah. First, sanitation from the hot water. That's kind of important. And secondly, productivity. If this room was 100 degrees, would you guys be very productive? If it was 30 degrees, would you be very productive? No. If the lights didn't function properly, would you be very No. So we're going to take care of this stuff, all right? So we're going to talk about these things as we go through that. Oh, my goodness. You guys know who Lord Kelvin was? Kelvin's temperature. Louder. Louder. Kelvin's temperature. Yeah, he, he created a temperature scale, didn't he? He did a lot about thermodynamics, all right? Does anybody know where the absolute zero is on the Fahrenheit scale? Negative 460. Negative 460. Yeah, you're right. And on the Kelvin scale or Celsius? 273, negative 273 or something like that. So absolute zero is the absence of what? It's the absence of heat. It is not the foundation of cold. <laughs> okay. Cold is simply the absence of heat. We use that as a descriptor to tell something in relative terms, and so we use cold. Cold, much like darkness, is simply the absence of light. 
All right. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Anyway, some pretty good stuff. But anyway, Jim Bowes, good friend of ours, kind of st- kicked all of this off when he proposed that he could move heat in and out of the earth. Huh. Why would he want to do that? Because the earth has very friendly temperatures to move heat in and out of spontaneously. So he started messing around and messing around. You know what? This is, we can get pretty close. The deep earth temperature here at Stillwater is about 64 degrees. If you like your thermostat at 72, that's not much of a change, is it? Now, when I'm cooling this house in Stillwater, it can get up to 105, 107. So if I'm air sourced and I'm trying to dump heat into that hot air with a Carnot cycle refrigeration system, hang on to your hat. It's going to get tough, isn't it? I might lose a lot of capacity and a lot of efficiency. So I may have to over-design, over-design. And in fact, you'll see that at 24-hour convenience stores. You'll see that the space conditioning, if they do it properly, is only about, on a regular store, only about... 12 tons here in Oklahoma. But they install about 30 tons on the roof. Why do they do that? To want lots of efficiency from the outside air. It's on the roof, so the rooftop could be even hotter than the outside air, which it is. What else? Yeah, I was saying to compensate for the ambient air temperature. Yeah loss of efficiency. We find that air coils tend to degrade over time and so we're trying to reject that air BTUs through the refrigerant to that coil that's outside in the air and refrigerant and as that coil does that over time it oxidizes and it gets less efficient. In fact roughly in about seven years at about 50 percent efficiency. So both those together are still only at 15 tons. That's what happens. And then all of a sudden they start dropping compressors because we have high refrigerant temperatures, high head. That's what's going on. So, hey, we can fix this stuff out. Anyway, Jim saw that and he said, you know, there's got to be a better way. And so he started down that road and attracted some of us to what he was doing. Right? And so he pretty well set up the industry in 1987 by establishing this association. Okay, and of course we are an outreach unit of Oklahoma State University's uh, SEAT College of Engineering and Technology. That's how we got, came to be. Okay, Professor Jim Bose did an excellent job and he's a very fun guy to have instructed. If any of you have been instructed by Jim or had any of his classes, he was a very knowledgeable, very entertaining person. Okay. <clears throat>